I've always been fascinated with comic book art, animation, and drawing. I spent the last few years learning Toon Boom Harmony for animation, but to relax at night, I've been sitting and drawing with Procreate on my iPad rather than watching TV or playing a video game. At first it was more intimidating than relaxing because I never knew what to draw or what to practice. Uh, the blank page is kind of intimidating, but once I quit worrying about that, I found that I really enjoyed it, and I could see my abilities improving quite a bit faster than I expected. A few days ago, I was curious about Procreate's animation capabilities. So I thought I would try those out by recreating a clip from Batman the Animated Series Introduction, which is a piece of animation I've always admired. To me, the intro was an instant classic the first time I saw it. This is the piece that I chose from that intro, which is less than two seconds long, so I thought surely I can recreate it without too much trouble. It took me several hours, but I did get faster once I found a Procreate workflow that worked for me. Here's the version that I created. I learned several things while working on this that I didn't expect, especially for such a short piece. So I want to discuss five of the most important ones. Hopefully you'll find these tips helpful too. If so, please like and subscribe and I'll keep working to create helpful content. This experience definitely changed the way I'll approach frame to frame animation in the future. I'll also show my Procreate time lapse as I talk through this so you can see the workflow. The first thing I learned was silhouettes are as important as everyone says. I'm a self-taught artist. I've bought a lot of online tutorials, most of which I've never finished, many of which I've never even started. In the ones I did manage to watch, they always talk about getting the silhouette correct first and how important that is because it helps alleviate future problems. Do I ever practice that? No. Like most unskilled people, I want to start working on the fun stuff immediately before completing the fundamentals. I usually start with the eyes and the shape of the head and work out from there, which is not the best workflow. When working on this clip, I did create a polished version of the first pose, but then I realized that if I did that for every frame, but then screwed up something in later poses, I'd have to correct a lot of previous drawings. So I forced myself to switch to blocking in the shapes first for each frame before adding any details. This led to the realization that all of those successful artists that I didn't listen to were right all along. Go figure. I've probably watched the Batman intro hundreds of times, but I never realized until I started recreating this that almost all the characters in it are just silhouettes with eyes. They barely have any detail, and yet it is such a captivating piece of animation. This exercise really showed me how powerful simple shapes can be, and that complex and detailed doesn't necessarily mean better. If anything, I overused detail in the past to try to hide mistakes, and those mistakes would have been prevented if I'd started with the silhouettes first. This realization led me to number two, which is learn to keep things simple. Working on this also made me realize how powerful a simple visual style can be. As an example, if you ignore the background, Batman in the intro, except for a few instances, is made up of only three colors, black, white, and blue. I didn't realize that until I worked on recreating this clip. The artist who created this added so much personality and action and story to the introduction with an extremely limited color palette. When I first started working on personal animations, I wanted everything I created to look like Venture Brothers, Rick and Morty, or Gravity Falls, which I quickly learned was a ridiculous standard for a one-man animation hobbyist. Recreating this clip made me understand that you can have a limited design style and still create something that is visually appealing, or in this case, industry changing. Again, the animation from the Batman cartoon is so good, it's easy to not realize how much they achieve with such a simple design. Once I figured this out, I realized number three, I didn't need to be afraid of frame-by-frame -frame animation. I began learning the cutout style of animation in Toon Boom Harmony first because I was afraid of frame-by-frame -frame animation. It looked like too much work and it looked too hard. How would I keep the proportions correct from one drawing to the next? I would never finish anything because it takes so long to create frame-by-frame -frame animation. I had a lot of different excuses in my head as to why I should learn the cutout style first. In that style, you make a rig once and you never, ever, ever have to draw anything ever again, right? Yeah, I quickly learned that wasn't true either. When I decided to try to recreate the Batman clip, it was mainly to test Procreate's animation tools, not create an original masterpiece. So I was able to relax while I worked on it, which made it a lot less intimidating. This led me to number four, which is everything you work on doesn't have to be an original piece. Working on this clip was enjoyable and taught me more about animation in two days than I've learned watching tutorials over the past several months. I didn't have to worry about story or design. There was no pressure about coming up with something new or something that would represent me. It was just practice. It was like following along with a self-guided tutorial. I learned about pacing, the drawing process for animation and procreate, how to best use onion skinning, and what type of workflow works best for me. 
Just creating this little clip has given me the confidence to think I could apply this to my own work. And speaking of my own work, I realized, number five, your drawing skills don't have to be perfect for frame-by-frame -frame animation. You can strive for perfection, but you don't have to achieve it to feel like you've accomplished something. Each frame of the animation I created could use some additional tweaking, and if they were standalone drawings, I would feel the need to go back and work on them some more. But until creating this, I didn't realize how quickly frames go by. I mean, I knew they go by really fast, 24 frames per second is really fast, but now I realize that if the timing looks right and the silhouettes look right, then the animation will look right, and that is what matters the most. Unlike standalone drawings, people don't have time to scrutinize every line. The movements just have to look believable, and the drawings aren't to be perfect for that to be true. So while perfection is great, it's not really necessary in this instance. Hopefully you found this information helpful. For me, I think this exercise helped me realize that frame-by-frame -frame animation has some benefits over cutout animation, mainly that it offers a bit more creative freedom since it feels a lot more like drawing and less like a technical exercise. Also, while I will still enjoy working on cutout animation projects, I think I was using it as a safety net because it feels like you have more control over the art when it's compared to frame-by-frame -frame animation. I think now I'll be a lot more comfortable mixing the two together as needed because I have found sometimes cutout is just faster. But if you need hand switches or mouse substitutions or things like that, it will be quicker to draw those rather than trying to manipulate those through modifiers. So that briefly covers my thoughts on this exercise. Hopefully this will encourage you to try frame by frame animation exercises as well. I may continue building on this clip since I enjoyed the process so much. This project could definitely be recreated in a variety of software, including Blender, Grease Pencil, and Krita. I just felt like being able to kick back with Procreate and the iPad was just a lot more relaxing than, than being huddled over in my typical workstation. If you found this information helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll be adding more Blender Grease Pencil tutorials in the future, and I may start adding Toon Boom Harmony trainings as well, so keep an eye out for those. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.